thank God for praise and worship on this morning. We thank the Father for what he's doing in the service on today. We thank God for what he's already done. Amen. In keeping with time, I won't be before you long. I just want to talk to you briefly today uh, a little bit. As we're approaching Resurrection Sunday, I'm sure there are many thoughts that are flooding your mind as we think about, you know, smaller children refer to it as Easter. and They want the Easter bunny and the Easter eggs and to do all those things. But those of us that have come into the knowledge of the family, this Resurrection Sunday, and we're celebrating the fact that the grave could not hold him down. Amen. We're celebrating the fact that he had power over death and the enemy. But today, as we are approaching, I want us to focus on an event that took place leading up to Resurrection Sunday. You see, we're all on this journey together, and we all find great strength, and we all, you know, we, we try and we strive to, you know, we're not going to always get it right, but we do our best. But how many understand that even in doing our best, there are going to be moments where we fall short? Amen. 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 You see, sometimes even the strongest people will face spiritual defeat. No matter how strong you are, no matter how bold your prayer life, no matter how well you can sing like an angel, no matter how well you have this choreographed step that you can do from the front of the church to the back, at some point in time, we will all experience spiritual defeat. You see, no matter how prepared we are, no matter how strong that we feel we are, times of pressure will bring out some shortcomings in our life. And you see, that's the thing about pressure. Pressure comes when you least expect it. And what pressure does is pressure stirs up those things that you have done your best to suppress and to hide. We can put our game face on all we want. We can put our poker face on as much as you want to. You can profess it and you can tell it and everybody can say you're the strongest Christian that they know. But at some point in time, pressure is going to come and a result of the pressure will be spiritual defeat. You see, spiritual pressure will cause you to personify your weaknesses instead of personifying your faith. It's going to come a point where it gets real hot in the kitchen and you've got a decision to make. And sometimes pressure will cause you to experience defeat. You see, when we see an apparently strong Christian have a moment of spiritual defeat, we're human, and I'll tell you exactly what we do. You may not want to admit it, but you'll say, now how did that happen to them? Yeah. You know, they pray so hard, and they always study their word, and they always have it together. How did they fall? Because they're human, just like you and I, and they found their moment of spiritual defeat. You know, we'll say, I never expected that to happen to brother so-and-so, or sister so-and-so, or pastor so-and-so, or evangelist so-and-so. Because you just, you, you know, that, that, that's who they are. They're strong. But how many know that God will take any situation and he will get the glory out of the situation? Amen. You can experience spiritual defeat and in the midst of your defeat, God will still get the glory. The song that we just sang, he's worthy of it all. And it didn't say he's worthy of it all when you're on the mountaintop. It just said he's worthy of it all. So mountaintop, valley, on the way, coming out, about to go through, he's still worthy of it all. And even if you experience spiritual defeat, he's worthy. Amen. Simon Peter, the leader of the twelve. Simon Peter, the hothead. Simon Peter, chief fisherman. Simon Peter, the one who professed his undying and unwavering support of Jesus. Under pressure, that great leader experienced spiritual defeat. You see, Peter's denial came while he was keeping warm by the fire of the enemy. Everything he had professed before that moment, everything that God had allowed him to do, every privilege that was afforded to Peter, Peter was not just in the 12, Peter was in the inner circle of the 12. He had a place that many of us can only imagine, or can't even fathom. Could you imagine to not just be one of the chosen 12,
but to be in the inner circle of the twelve, to walk so closely with Jesus, to you, 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 you could feel the wind that blew on him. You heard, you heard his voice, and you were in close proximity of his voice. You were a chosen leader, but now, one night, in the midst of the enemy's fire, you experience spiritual defeat. You see, Peter was a strong individual. He was a great leader. He was a dynamic Christian. But with all that being said, Peter still cracked under pressure. Mm -hmm. You see, today we're going to examine some of the aspects of Peter's life and his personality. Turn to your neighbor and remind them, pressure happens to us all. Pressure happens to us all. So be careful when you warm by the enemy's fire. Amen. Warm by the enemy's fire. Let us stand for our scripture reading. Our scripture reading today is coming from the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 54 through 55. And the word reads as follows. Then, seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Father, for this the opportunity to come together, Lord, and share your word, Father. Let the word today, Father, be a needed word, Heavenly Father, for these your people, Father. Let this word convict us, but let this word also encourage us, Heavenly Father. Let us remember, Father, that we have a purpose, Heavenly Father. Let us remember, Father, that you have a plan, Heavenly Father. Most importantly, Father, let us remember, Lord, that even when we fail, you're still worthy of it all. You are the God of redemption. You are our soul's redeemer. We thank you, Father. Bind us together, Lord, with a cord that cannot be broken, which is your love. Now, Holy Spirit, I empty myself of me, Father. And Lord, you speak to these, your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's take a look at the personality of Peter. Okay, we understand that Peter was a person of great strength. Amen. We know that he had strength, and Peter displayed this strength as a strength of leadership. Okay? Whenever the disciples are listed, Peter's name is always called first. Peter was a strong leader for the people, okay? So the fact that Peter is always listed first, it tells us a little bit of how the people thought of Peter. They gave Peter a high regard. They gave Peter a high esteem. They understood that Peter wasn't perfect. They understood that Peter messed up. They understood that Peter had a hot head. But when it came to thinking of themselves, there's 12. But Peter was always listed first because Peter displayed the strength of leadership. Peter was a member of the inner circle of the disciples, and he was privileged to share many key moments with Christ. When they were in the garden praying, there was Peter. When the time came for the transfiguration, Peter was one of the few that was present. Peter was a leader, okay? Now, to understand some things about the strength of leadership, let us remember that leaders have to sometimes lead, even when they would prefer to follow. You don't always get it right. You don't always do it right the first time. One of my main concerns with becoming Pastor Haywood was the fact that I understood I ain't gonna always get it right. I know my personality, I know my temper can be short, I know I hold on to things I shouldn't, I know that things get on my nerves, but now I'm gonna be a leader? How am I gonna lead when what, I, what they know about me is so messed up? But that's how you lead. Because when you have the strength of a leader and you have the power of the Father within you, even when you feel like following, you find yourself leading. Because when you give God your heart and your hand, what you say is, I'll go if I have to go by myself. What you say is, Father, I'm, the world knows my story. The world sees my scars. The world remembers what I went through. But if you direct me, I'll follow you. But as I follow you, I'm leading the people. You see, leaders sometimes have to lead while they're hurting internally. Every day for a leader is not a good day. There have been many things I've shared 
on Monday night when I had just wiped the tears from my eyes before it was time to pray. But you know, you take your pity party, you have your moment, but then you remember your assignment. And you have to go forward because sometimes you have to leave even when you're hurting internally. And people will tell you that's being fake. People will tell you that's being phony. People will tell you that's putting on. That is faith and the strength of a leader. Yeah. Because despite what I'm going through, I'm going to go through it because i got to get through it. But on my way, I'm going to give God the praise because he's worthy of it all. I know what's happening around me. I know how much money I got. I know what the doctor said. I know all these things. But I'm going to leave even while I'm hurting. And the reason I'm going to leave while I'm hurting is because I understand if I keep following him, it's that the goodness and mercy are going to follow me. So if I keep following after Christ, eventually goodness and mercy are going to catch me. His goodness is going to be there to make me feel better. And his mercy is going to be there to eradicate the slate of everything that I've gone through. See, we hold on to the shortcomings. We hold on to the bad days. We hold on to yesteryear. But God said it's in the sea of forgiveness. As far as the east is from the west. So you must have and display the strength of leadership. You see, leaders have the privilege to lead. But leadership also comes with a price. You're going to lead the people, but everybody ain't going to want to follow. You're going to lead the people, but some people are going to want to tell your story rather than hear your testimony. You're going to want to lead the people, and it may want to make you pump up your chest and pull out your chest, but you'll understand that there is always a price that comes with leadership. Because your life is on display no matter how much you try to conceal it, no matter how much you tell people we don't want to talk about it, no matter how much you try to forget it, it is on display. People are watching, even if they ain't saying it. People are watching, even if they ain't telling you. People are watching, even if they're not praying for you. But as a leader, you have to go forward, but understand the privilege of leadership has a price. We talk about Peter, and how many times do we talk about Peter's family? How many times do we talk about what Peter liked to do in his spare time? How many times do we talk about how Peter celebrated his birthday? Nobody cared. We talk about the good things that Peter did a little bit. But we talk about the bad things he did a whole lot more. Yeah. We can share his testimony and win so many souls to Christ. But instead, every now and then, we'll talk about how he had a bad temper. We'll talk about how he fell short. And we'll talk about this, and we'll talk about that, and we'll forget the good things. But Peter chose to be a leader, but he understood that that privilege came with the price. So you can't think that as a leader, everyone is going to go for giving you recognition. Because sometimes as a leader, the strength of leadership teaches you to be strong in the midst of rebuke. Peter loved the Lord with all his heart. Peter did the best that he could. But Peter was also the first to get the rebukes. I'm trying. Lord, I love you. See my charisma? See this and see that? And he would still give them a rebuke. Yeah. But you have to have strength of leadership even in the rebuke. Because the rebuke isn't about cutting you up. The rebuke is about keeping you on the straight and narrow. And see, as a leader, you got to take the licks and you got to keep on taking them. You got to take the, cor 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 the, the correction and the criticism and you got to keep on moving. You ain't got time to defend your man. You got to look in that pot and see what you can eat and what you got to spit out. But you got to take it and you got to keep on moving because it's not always recognition. Sometimes it's rebuke. But when the rebuke comes from those that love you, it's to keep you going and keep you on the path of where you need to be. Amen. The strength of leadership will sometimes reflect on your triumph. People talk about the good that you do, but I'm here to tell you, for every good thing that they remember, it's three or four bad they ain't going to say to you things. Amen. But you, with the strength of leadership, have to keep moving forward. Because despite how Peter fell short that evening by the enemy's fire, despite how Peter denied him three times. Peter was still a leader, right? And what did Peter do on the day of Pentecost? Oh, yeah. He preached to thousands. Yes. 
The man that fell short. Right. The man that denied Jesus. Mm -hmm. The man that when Jesus said, you're going to deny me, he said, no, not me. not me. And as I read the scriptures so eloquently put once, it said that as the rooster crowed the third time and Peter was following from the distance, it says that Peter, in that moment, locked yeah. eyes with Jesus. Yes, oh, yes, he did. Yes, 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 he did. Called to be the leader. Mm -hmm. All of them that are following you and looking to you for direction, <clears throat> boldly proclaiming that you'll never turn your back, boldly proclaiming that you'll go to the end with them. And oh, in yes. this moment, in this moment, in the midst of the warmth of the enemy's fire, yes. you denied him three times. Uh -huh. yes. And I know I would want to turn and run away, but before he could, he locked eyes he locked with eyes Jesus. With him. Yes. Can you imagine Jesus. how that would feel? Mm -hmm. Remembering the moments that you said, I'll never turn my back on you. Yeah. Remembering the moments that you said, I'm going to ride with you till the wheels fall off. Yeah. And in this very moment, But in the midst of the denial, Peter had the strength of leadership. Yes. Okay? Peter also displayed the strength of the spirit. You can't just be a leader. you got to also have the strength of the spirit. Peter was not a timid man. Peter was a soldier. Peter spoke his mind. Peter let you know how he felt. Peter let you know what he wasn't going to stand for. Okay? You see, he was a bold spiritual adventurer. We too must possess that boldness. Yeah. Peter was bold enough to know, I done messed up. He's rebuked me before. I know y'all heard it, but you're not going to turn me from what I know. You're not going to stop me from what needs to be done. I know you heard what I did yesterday. I know you heard that day he gave me the rebuke, but that's not going to change what I said because I said what I said. Peter had a boldness. Peter had so much strength of spirit that he tried to be a water walker. People don't walk on water. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, you know, logic tells us that. Science tells us that. You don't walk on water. But Peter had a strength of the spirit that made him believe that he could step out of the boat and walk on water. Amen. You see, I probably would have tried to walk on the water in the bathtub. <laughs> I probably would have tried to walk on the water on the sidewalk. But Peter was such, had such strength in the spirit that he stepped out in the midst of the sea, laying nowhere in sight. Yes. And he just said, I'm going to walk. Yes. Call me, and I'm coming to you. Because he had a strength of the spirit. You see, you have to be bold because boldness in character will breed boldness in spirit. Be careful. There's a, it's a fine line <laughs> between your boldness and just you being out of control. But you got to have that boldness. Because what that boldness says is, I don't care what you say on the contrary. I'm going to stand on that which I know. You know my story. You know my shortcomings. But that's not going to change my mind. Because there's a strength in the spirit. You see, what we have to remember is it's not always about the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight that's within the dog. Amen. You got to be able to stand up against your opposition. Mm -hmm. And the way that you stand against your opposition is when you display the strength of the spirit. Peter had a strength of the spirit. Peter knew what was within him. Peter knew what he did. Peter knew himself better than any of us. But he also knew what dwelled within him. Amen. Peter also displayed strength in his body. How do we know that Peter had strength in his body? You see, Peter was a fisherman. So as a fisherman, Peter was rowing boats constantly, developing his muscles. Peter was casting heavy nets constantly, developing his muscles. Peter was pulling in nets filled with tons of fish and throwing them into the ship, constantly developing his muscles. See, he showed a physical strength. To the point that even when they were in the garden, Peter felt like he could take on the entire mob. Yeah. Because Peter was like, I roll these boats every day. I pull these nets 
every day. I serve the master and I'm charged up for Jesus and I'm on Jesus' side. And if none of y'all are going to stand, I'll stand by myself yeah. because he has strength in his body. Mm -hmm. You see, Peter had on the outside the things that would be displayed to tell you he was a man not to mess with. Mm -hmm. But there was still something on the inside that caused him to experience spiritual defeat. Now, why would they with Jesus let it play out this way. Because despite the qualities that you saw externally, Peter denied the Lord because it takes more than physical strength in your body. Yes. Come on. To make it yes. 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 Peter yes. understood yes. that he had to have strength. Yes. Yes. But Peter showed us that it's just not about what's in your body. Mm -hmm. It's just not about what you profess. Mm -hmm. It's just not about how you lead. The next thing we have to remember about Peter, Peter's life shows us that he was vulnerable to sin. As Christians, we are still vulnerable to sin. You didn't become a Christian and got a get out of sin free card. Mm -hmm. You didn't become a Christian to get a bubble that protects you and from this moment to the day you leave here, everything's going to be all right and you're never going to experience sin. That is not how it works. That's why he said, my grace is is sufficient. Yes. Because we are all still vulnerable to sin. The problem with Peter and his vulnerability, Peter, just like us, he was he knew of sin, but he was blind to his weaknesses of sin. Don't be blind to your weaknesses. Okay? We got to understand that we possess great strength. He was a great leader. He had the physical prowess. He knew how to lead. He had the strength of the spirit, but he never acknowledged his weaknesses. Okay. That's where we get into trouble. Mm -hmm. We read the resume of all the good things that we got, but we never read and focus on the side effects. Mm -hmm. You take this medicine to make this better, but on the contrary, this and this and this and this and this can happen. Mm -hmm. Remember the side effects, okay? You see, Peter confidently told Jesus that he would follow him to prison and even to death. Now, while that's a noble thing to say, while that sounds good and will charge you up, while that makes you feel like you're going to make it, you got to understand that while that, gave, that statement gives a great assurance, it shows that Peter spoke in ignorance of his fleshly potential, and he totally forgot about the ability to fall to the temptation of sin. Because Peter was basically saying, just like I am, I'm coming with you. Nobody's going to separate us. I'm going to ride with you till the wheels fall off. But Peter forgot that he had some weaknesses as well along the way. You see, don't see your strength so clearly that you overlook your weaknesses. Okay? Don't focus so much on that thing that you do so well that you forget about those things that you struggle with. Because while you're bragging and while you're boasting and while you're moving forward in those things that you're doing so well, the enemy is listening. Yes, he And the enemy is. knows. Mm -hmm. yes. And the enemy is watching and waiting for an opportunity. And the enemy will let you brag and boast and do all these things because in the enemy's mind, when I take you down, mm -hmm. you'll never feel worthy. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on. You know? Yeah. Go ahead, Peter. Brag about him. You know, cut the centurion's ear off. Do all those things. But you're going to deny him. And when you deny, oh, you ain't going to feel like you're worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you pump your chest out. I'm going to let you do what you feel you got to do. But a moment is coming, and I'm going to make you feel so low. You see, it's like working out in the gym. You can't always want to work your upper body and work those muscles that everybody can see and get shown off. And say, oh, yeah, you work out. You do this, you do that. How many times have you seen people in the upper bodies together and the legs are kind of like this? <laughs> Because it needs to be a total package. Don't just focus on that which you can do easily. Yes, yes. But remember those areas that are weak. Because when people see your strength, they'll also see your weakness. And when the enemy sees your strength, he'll also remember your vulnerabilities. It doesn't matter if you make a whole lot of money. If you don't know how to budget, it means nothing. Yes. So you have the ability to make the money, but if you don't have the discipline to budget and save it, why is it worth it? You can brag about all the money you got, 
But if you got more debt, then you got money. You <laughs> okay. So you gotta work it all together. Yes. Okay? Yes. I'm let you in on a little secret. You see, the devil searches for your vulnerable spot. And that's where he's always going to attack. You see, Jesus warned Peter of Satan's desire to sift him like me. And Satan waited and caught Peter at his most vulnerable moment. Let me tell you how sin and vulnerability gets you. You can be as strong as a levy that's put in place to withstand the water. The water's going to come, and it's going to hit you hard, and you want to be strong, and you want to stay there. But what the water does is the water just slowly wraps itself completely around your border. It leaves no area untouched. And all it's got to do is find one little crack. Mm -hmm. A crack so small that you can't even see it. Mm -hmm. A crack so small that you're not even thinking about it. Because in your mind, you see the water and you stop the water so you're doing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But that small crack it's going to wrap itself around and it's going to keep on going and it's going to find the track and it's going to penetrate through slowly but surely. And eventually, when it finds your vulnerable spot, that's when he comes in. You see, he, the devil did his best to put Peter in a place of isolation. We have to be careful with isolation and solitude. Because what isolation does is the enemy wants to put you in a place of isolation to tell you that you are right and you can do it by yourself. I know you're embarrassed about what you're going through, so go off over there by yourself. You see, Peter was without of the safety of the other eleven. You see, Peter was without the safety of the father because Peter's sin caused him to place himself in isolation. And the enemy wants you in isolation because in isolation is when he's going to attack. And when you find yourself in a season of isolation and you think that you're hiding so you can get better and you can come back stronger than before, the enemy attacks you and does his best to keep you there. Because when you cry out from isolation, the eleven can't hear you because you're all by yourself. And see, the, the, the lion doesn't come to destroy when you're in the midst of the crowd. The lion prowls on the outside. And he watches and he waits until you are isolated and you are separated. Because in the isolation is when he attacks. You can call out to your friends from isolation. They ain't gonna hear you. Your friends ain't gonna know what to pray for because you didn't tell them what was going on. And you're isolated. And in isolation is when you will find the temptation is hurled upon you. But when we choose solitude, what solitude does is solitude says, yeah, I need a minute, and I need to be by myself. I'm not going to disconnect. I'm simply going to refocus. Okay. And see, in solitude, you can hear the Father when he speaks to you because the distractions have been cut out. The white noise is gone, and you're giving him your focus. You needed a minute to be by yourself, but you're not too far from the grip of grace. So choose solitude. If Peter would have chose solitude, everything might have been all right. Because he would have still been in the grip of grace and able to hear the Father. Okay, You see, your mind is going to tell you to cut everybody off totally and do it by yourself. Your mind will tell you that nobody needs to know what you're going through. Your mind will tell you to ignore the text from the people that mean you well and are calling to check on you. Your mind will tell you not to pray with your friends when they call you for prayer. Your mind will tell you tell everybody you're blessed and highly favored. Your mind will tell you you can do it by yourself. Your mind will tell you all they want to do is talk behind your back. Your mind will tell you you're better off. But in isolation mm -hmm. is when the temptation will set in. Okay? So always choose solitude over isolation. You see, and Peter was a man that felt the pressure to conform. I can relate to this so well. We live in a society where it's all look like me, do like I do, sound like us, be a carbon copy of this and a carbon copy of that. Peter felt the pressure of those men there, okay? 
This was a vulnerable moment, and the enemy found Peter in this moment. Peter allowed himself to be guided by those that were around him, and not by that which wanted to dwell within him. You see, Peter went beyond the healthy concern of having a concern for what other people have to say. And he found himself beyond that and being molded by what the people had to say. Peter knew who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Peter knew what Jesus had done. Peter knew who called him to walk on water. Peter knew all of these things. But because he was conforming to the pressure, he didn't express it the way that it should be expressed. You see, Peter fell to the peer pressure and instead of viewing Christ as the suffering servant that came to save us all, mm -hmm. in that moment, Peter viewed Christ simply as the victorious Messiah that would conquer the Romans. That's what he was going to do. Right. But Peter forgot about the humility of it all. Yes. How did Peter forget the humility? Because he was conforming to the pressure of those that were around him. So in that very moment, Jesus rebuked Peter. He called him Satan and said that he was a stumbling block to him. The man that he named Rock, he says, now you're a stumbling block to me. How is Peter a stumbling block to Christ? Because he was feeding man's agenda rather than Christ's purpose and plan. Yes. Never get so caught up in the moment. Yes. That you feed man's agenda mm -hmm. and you forget about Christ's purpose yes. and plan for you. Mm -hmm. Warming by the fire of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And Peter experienced spiritual defeat. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want you to remember today is never forget the pleasures that can be found in God. Mm -hmm. So, what should we do when we face the compromises of peer pressure? We've all been there, and we'll all be there again. Well, Paul tells us exactly what to do in Romans 12 and 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, That's right. but be transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Yes. His good, yes. pleasing, yes. and yes. perfect yes. will. Yes. Do not do conform. Not. Do not conform. You can be in the world, yes. but you don't have to be of the world. Yes. You can be warmed by the fire, yes. but you can't forget the fire that burns so richly within you. Yes. In the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. You can listen to them say, there's another way other than Jesus. <laughs> but don't you forget what Jesus has done. Amen. You can listen to them tell you. I don't know why you run to church every Sunday. But don't you forget what you find in the house of the Lord. You can let them tell you as much as they want that there's another way to get there and there's another way to work it out. But don't you conform to the world that is around you. You can be with them, but you don't got to do it like they do. And how do you withstand them? You have a renewed mind. And what the renewed mind does is, the renewed mind says, I know you're here to talk to yeah. but let's review this resume of what he's done in your life. Yeah. He healed you yeah. when the doctor said yeah. you were going to die. Yeah. He fed you when you had no food. Yeah. He loved you when you had yeah. no food. Yeah. He saved you yeah. when you were headed for sin and death. Yeah. He advocated yeah. for you when nobody else could. Yeah. He walked beside you yeah. in the valley of the shadows of death. Resurrection. 
Some of the disciples were having breakfast with the Lord alongside the Sea of Galilee. Three times, Jesus asked Peter if he loved him. Peter said, yes, you know I love you. Like we got, we, we passed what happened back there in the garden. We passed that. Yeah. You said the sea of forgiveness, so you forgot. Yeah. Now, let's, let's leave that in the past. That's what Peter's basically saying. Yeah. I love you. Three times I done told you I love you. But Peter is still Peter. So in the midst of that moment, when I would have just been saying, Father, thank you. <laughs> I messed up and you forgave me. I had a spiritual defeat and you're still on my side. What did Peter do? Peter pointed to John and asked the Lord, what about him? In the moment when you should just be thankful Amen. that you still got a seat at the table, Amen. you decide to say, well, I know I messed up, but what about this one over here? Uh -huh. Now, you forgave me, but do you see what he's doing? How many times is that us? Yeah. Misery always loves company. Yes, it does. But Jesus simply responded. Mm -hmm. If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is what it to is that that you? What, what is it to you? Mind you your business. Okay. Focus on you. Exactly. If I want him to remain alive, yeah. if I forgave oh, thank you, yeah. John didn't betray me in the garden. Okay. John didn't claim to be the soldier that you claim to be. So why are you pointing out John? Mm -hmm. If I want him to remain if I want him until to. alive, until I return, what is, it what to is, that, to is that yes. to you? Yes. Oh, yes. You see, even in this moment, it was difficult for Peter to face God's will. Mm -hmm. But now the same crucial question that was posed to Peter confronts each and every one of us as well. What will you do with Christ? Mm -hmm. Are you going to deny him in the midst of those that are you going to proclaim him among those that walk like you and talk like you and in the safety of the church? Yeah. But are you going to get in the streets amongst those that don't believe and, and change the story a little bit? to be like them, mm -hmm. what will you do with Christ? And then the beauty that Christ is strategic. He's so strategic that that question, you can't pass it off to someone else. Mm -hmm. You have to decide for yourself. Yeah. Peter tried to take the heat off and put it on time. Mm -hmm. He said, what is it to you? So in tough times, when the pressures of others offer convenient options, what are you going to decide to do? When you're sitting at work where they tell you not to bring in your religious beliefs, but you can bring in any and everything else that has nothing to do with the job, what are you going to say when your coworkers say, well, Nick, I don't know about, you know, believing in Jesus and him, taking all that. He can't be a good guy and want to punish some and send them to hell. What will you do with Christ? You know, you know, I don't know why people think they gotta give money to the church. I would never give them a dime. What will you do with Christ? When the story is all over the internet and what everyone is choosing to believe is not exactly what happened, and everybody says that you're not the Christian that you profess that you're called to be, what will you do with Christ? You see, <clears throat> The warmth of the enemy's fire can be appealing. But in the warmth and the comfort of the fire, you have a decision to make for Christ. If you miss the decision and you experience spiritual defeat, he's still there. And he'll give you the opportunity to get together and get right. But the question still remains. How shall you respond. And it is my prayer that your response will be that you know the Lord and you love the Lord because he heard your cry. Amen. Be careful when you warm by the enemy's fire. Amen. 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 God's word for his people. Amen. Amen.